In a previous video, we discussed the forces and actions that occur to and in the paw at surface contact. As described, these forces have to be managed by the musculoskeletal structures of the paw and other related tissues. Therefore, there are actions and reactions by the muscles, tendons, and ligaments to balance the body as well as protect the structure itself. The bones and joints are displaced medially, laterally, cranially, and caudally throughout the stance phase. The muscles, tendons, ligaments, and fascial structures act to hold everything in place. The paw impact of the dog or other animals that have paws is much different than the human foot or animals who have hooves. Needless to say, it is a very complex set of actions that are rarely discussed in the veterinary curriculums, animal sciences, or in the dog training sector. The paw surface interaction is just the start of a chain of actions and reactions by the rest of the limb and body throughout the phases of locomotion and body movement. In this presentation, we will, we will discuss how the paw's impact and related stance phase affects the rest of the limb. In the world of biomechanics, walking and running have been described as controlled falling in the direction of movement. In the bipedal human, one leg will propel the balanced body forward until the other leg swings forward to interact with the surface to again stabilize the body in a forward state. Locomotion results from these repeated actions. In dogs or quadrupeds, it is the same except there are four legs involved. The front limbs are typically the major influence on gait navigation, keeping the body going in a straight line while at the same time balancing all of the various weights and forces associated with gravity, muscle propulsion, and muscle posture actions. The rear limbs act to propel the body forward, but their actions can also help to direct the body in one way or another. In the walk gait, the body is supported by multiple limbs. There is a forward propulsion created by the legs in their stance phase. As the body moves forward, putting the body out of balance, one of the other legs will swing forward to interact with the surface in a stance phase, which stabilizes the body in a forward motion. These actions are repeated, creating the walk gait. As the paw makes contact, the limb begins to receive the concussive force of impact. This is first felt in the structures of the paw the digits, metapodal structures, the carpus or tarsus, and the related muscles, tendons, ligaments, and fascia. As the energy goes up the limb proximally, there are distractive forces placed on the lateral and caudal aspects of the limb and compressive forces on the medial and cranial aspects of the limb. This means that the muscles of the limb are contracting and either stabilizing or extending at the same time to balance and enable the limb to successfully maneuver itself while receiving the force actions and then directing the core body mass in a balanced manner. A review of the actions of the various muscles during the stance and swing phase can be found at sportsvet.com in the knowledge base section. I will add a link to this page in the notes. The front legs typically will receive and manage the forces of locomotion differently than the rear limbs. As previously described, they play a significant role in navigation but have some anatomical variations as well. The front limbs are attached to the body by a muscular sling. This allows them to better absorb the forces of impact, but also the lateral forces involved with turning. In this sequence, the dog has an increased load on the front limbs related to the bumper in its mouth. This causes the center of mass to move forward. This would increase the force on the front limbs, dependent upon the amount of weight added. In this scenario, the weight of the bumper is not a great amount for, the, for a dog this size. The dog is also decelerating or slowing down. This also adds forces to the front limbs. The dog will widen its stance or the width between the two front legs to help create a wider area of impact. The rear limbs are attached by a tight interbone articular joint, the hip. This allows for a strong, stable structure needed to handle the extreme forces of propulsion created by the musculature of the rear limbs. It also stabilizes the pelvic base to handle the lifting action of the long isthmus muscles and the other apaxia muscles, which lifts the front of the body during running and locomotion. A tethered attachment, such as a leash or sled dog harness, will affect how the body receives and manages the forces of impact and stance. In this sequence, a very energetic dog is pulling away from the handler. 
which shifts how the forces affect the limbs. It increases the lateral forces on the legs, and the center of mass is shifted. This is not a negative effect, and in many cases, it is a good thing to have a dog who is so excited to participate in the activity. From a medical standpoint, these changes in force should be considered especially if a dog was in a rehabilitation program and the force strains on the structure affect the reconditioning processes. In the sequence where the dog is not pulling on the leash, there is minimal effect on the legs of the dog. A dog's body shape will affect how the limbs receive the forces of the stance phase. There are three basic structural shapes for the dog. An ectomorph dog will have a higher center of gravity with long legs. An endomorph dog will have a lower center of gravity and short legs. Mesomorph dogs are in between and are represented in the dog seen in the earlier part of this presentation. Here we see an Old English Bulldog. He has a very similar gait to the other dogs when viewed from the side. The other dogs tend to bring their limbs towards midline to maintain balance except when slowing down from a run where they tend to widen their base. Since the bulldog has a wider chest than the previous dogs, we see a different movement of the front limbs. As the leg is brought forward, the paw and distal structures will pass immediately. Because the chest is wider in relation to the length of the leg or the height of the dog, the leg will make surface contact just to the outside of midline. It is important to note that although it is not on the midline, it is also not outside the normal plane of the limb. It should be noted that in this video sequence, the positioning of the head towards the dog's right side does have some influence on the flight pattern of the leg. In general, when the dogs are running at a constant velocity, in a straight line, on an even level terrain, the rear limbs will contact the ground in a tight line under the midline of the body. This minimizes lateral forces and concentrates the forces towards the forward propulsion of the body. If they deviate away from the midline, it would direct the movement to the right or left. The front limbs will also contact the surface towards midline. This allows the dog to maintain its speed with minimal deviation in direction. If the surface becomes uneven laterally, the dog will compensate by altering the surface contact of its front legs either medially or laterally. This allows the dog to continue its path towards its desired destination with minimal disruptions. These deviations will alter how the leg receives the forces of impact. Once this is under understood, any training or conditioning program should include various terrains and subtle uneven surfaces. This will help to strengthen and prepare the musculoskeletal system to handle the surface challenges of everyday life.